In this video, I'm gonna show you how to turn this into this. Before we start, the first thing you need to take into account is that you need to have two still shots. So make sure you have a tripod or that you have your camera in a place where it's not gonna move so that both videos are from the same angle. Put both of those videos together and then create a new Fusion clip. Here we're gonna right click and we're gonna open this in Fusion. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a mask that's gonna work for both of our objects. Here we're gonna use a polygon and we're gonna invert this so we see this on screen and we can actually use this and try to make these without too many points. Now we're gonna do the same thing for the other one. We're gonna press two here on the media two and we're gonna connect our polygon and we're gonna go to the frame 20 here. And what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna adjust our mask so that it fits around our object right here. And if you don't wanna have these be like that, you can actually disconnect this and you can still edit it around it. After we have that mask, we're gonna leave that on that side for a little bit. We're gonna press Ctrl and Spacebar and we're gonna add a grid warp. Here on this grid warp, we're gonna actually set the X grid size to 20 and the same thing for the other one. Then we're gonna decrease the magnet distance so that's a little bit smaller. After that, set up the blending mode of this merge node 2.5. And we're gonna press two here on the media out. So we have both on screen. Okay, what we wanna do is get this media to convert into the apple shape. A little quick break. If you need transitions or animated titles and elements for DaVinci Resolve, you can check out my website, suavi.com. So we're gonna go into the grid warp here and we're gonna create a keyframe. After we have created that second keyframe on frame 20, we can either use the region magnet type or use selected. If you use selected, in this case, it's gonna be easier to bring all of those points closer to what the apple is and then adjust them individually. After we have done that for the first object, we wanna add a second, we can actually copy and paste this grid warp node after we copy and paste this grid warp, we're gonna press this R right here so it resets all the points and we're gonna go to the first frame. And on this first frame, we want to make our apple go and fit this area that our first object has. For that, in this case, it's easier to use the region one because we can move these around and drag the different elements. Making it smaller, it's a little bit harder. That's why I had to use the other type. Now the next thing that we wanna do is actually we're gonna bring the blending mode all the way to zero here at the frame zero. And we're gonna go to the frame 20 and we're gonna set this to one. Now we're gonna copy and paste this polygon and we're gonna connect these to the second object. And then on the first object, we can actually deactivate that mask transform. And now if we preview these, we can see the transformation sort of happening and starting. The next thing that we want to add is we're going to add a glow effect and we're actually going to copy and paste this polygon again into this glow effect. That way it's only going to be affected to our object right here. Now we don't want these to be activated all the time. So we're going to go here at frame zero and create a keyframe for the glow size. So it's at like zero for the glow. And then at frame, right at the half point, we're going to bring this all the way to like point closer to 0.9. And then at 20, we're gonna bring this back to zero. Now, don't worry if it looks a little bit weird here, we're actually gonna go to the polygon and we're gonna make this softer there. After that's in place, we wanna select all of these that have any keyframe animation on and we're gonna select everything here in the spline tool and we're gonna press F and then T so that we can ease them in and ease them out a little bit. One more thing that you can do here is we're gonna go to the grid warp and we're gonna add motion blur to both of them And the last little touch and effect that we have is actually going to the templates and then in Fusion, we're gonna find the particles and then we're gonna add the glitter effect. Now, this is going to take a bunch of resources. So if your computer doesn't have too much power, you might wanna avoid this one. Here, we're gonna connect these and you'll see right away how it's everywhere. And for that, we're actually gonna have to double click here 
and we're gonna go to the particles emitter we're gonna press 2 right here and we're gonna change this region to sphere now everything's gonna be going upwards like that like a fountain now here you can play around with the different elements in this case I want to actually make the size variance a little bit smaller so they're not that big and we're actually also gonna go to controls and I want these number from 10 to disappear right after the 10th keyframe and it's gonna go at 12 it's gonna go to zero that way no new particles are gonna be created after the 12th frame another thing that I want to do is we're gonna decrease the lifespan it's gonna be only 35 and the variance it doesn't have to be that much either it could be around 18 or 15 and after that you're pretty much set here in the merge section we're gonna actually press 2 again so we can see these and I want these to show up only when their glow is happening so for that we're gonna go to frame 8 and we're gonna bring the blending mode to 0 at frame 10 which is right when the glow starts to happen we're gonna go to the blending and bring this all the way to 1 and then at 14 we're gonna bring this back to 0 after that then the morphing effect in itself is pretty much ready the last thing that we can do is we're gonna go to the edit page and here we're gonna go to effects and we're gonna add an adjustment clip on this adjustment clip what we're gonna do is go to open effects and then search for shake we're gonna add the camera shake that's gonna create a little zoom in by itself because of how the effect works and then you can actually decrease the speed scale and then play around with the different values here and after you press play then it will add that little handheld sort of um, feel to the footage that you have if you're having trouble seeing how the camera shake looks while this fusion clip is still not rendered what you can do is actually copy any clip that you want here and then we're going to bring this adjustment layer and now we can actually see the movement that our camera shake has and here you can play around and adjust it however you want and after you've made all the adjustments you simply drag these on top of the main clip again and then you can actually just create a compound clip of these and then you right click and then render these in place or you can send, go to the deliver page if you want to add more things like a zoom to make it a little bit more punchy then you can do that too it's all up to your creativity and how you use this and that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you in the next video here in Suave. Bye.